Pascal. Thanks. <laughs> Girls, we're going to smoke the mackerel that I caught yesterday. Smokey. How beautiful golden brown it is. With the calm weather persisting, we decided to extend our stay at Broadhurst Reef a few more days. doing this morning there, Dal? Oh, bloody fishing. Oh! <laughs> that is, that is like the tricky snapper that I saw um, when we were snorkeling and it was blending in with the reef. Yeah, he's not, he's not so tricky anymore. No. He's pretty. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. He's a little bit hard to unhook for me first thing in the morning. He's so beautiful. I think you need to have a picture with him once you get the hook out. <laughs> well done, Dal. You're a bloody beauty. Mm -hmm. They've got really nice colours. Yeah, we'll go and have a look. There's a, um, the outgoing tide's hitting that corner of that reef pretty nicely, makes a nice pressure point. I can't see a lot of bait active on the surface. We'll go and see. Thank you. 
As the current increased and the bait fish were packed into tighter balls, we started seeing trevally and mackerel showing up to hunt. Well, that's not a bad, uh, not a bad catch there, Pascal. Little footballer trout. Hmm. Just the perfect size for us and for sharing with Meg and Darren from Sarian. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. We got there. It was a really good, really good snorkel today. Did you notice that when the tide was like at its peak, that whole wall was a pressure point? There was lots yep. of bait. There was loads of fusiliers and um, yeah, little chromis and lots of snapper and there was a school of. Um, permit there mm -hmm. and lots of trout. It was a it, good spot. There was a bit of everything. Yeah. It was very lively. I, even now as the tide's tapering off I can see you know, bait bait working the surface there. Yeah, the fusiliers. Hmm. Alright, so we've uh, we've got a few more days of this weather while we're out here as well. Uh-huh. Yep. Awesome. More exploring to be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a total glass out. Yeah, these, these are days that's just made for being at the reef. Yeah. Uh -oh. There we go, a little bit of rock and roll for me and the neighbour. I mean, nothing's jumping off of the tabletop or throwing up out of cupboards or anything. It's pretty peaceful, actually. The bucket stabiliser's doing a little bit of work. There's a real benefit of the solar panel. You know, some people pointed that out last time we were talking about it. You can tilt the panels when you want, and here I'm just catching the full afternoon sun. So instead of making just two amps, I'm making about 4.3. Doing your makeup for your date? Uh huh. Going on a sup date. I haven't confirmed the time yet, so I've just got to get on the radio in a minute. How do I look? You look zinked up. Do I look protected? Yeah, what is that you're putting on your face there, Pascal, for people that don't come from Australia? Zinc. It's like a barrier between your, creates a barrier between your skin and the sun. Some might also call that sunscreen. Mm. Sunscreen, but like it's not, that's right, sun barrier, sunscreen. Broad spectrum. Sorry, and this is Maru. They might not be there, they might be sleeping. Yeah, we're all Sarian back to 7-1. Yep, going up to 7-1. We're all Sarian. Um, wondering if you wanted to go for a sup. I'd love to. <laughs> I'm just stopping myself on um, some food. Oh, yeah. And then I'll pop over. Oh, cool. Oh, I might, um, I'll just come, I'll just swim over in a minute. Sounds good. See you soon. Okay. Bye. I'm really bad with that. <laughs> I start talking without holding the button. Mm. <laughs> Need a bit more practice.
With our SUP date over, we said goodbye to Meg and Darren, who are heading north the next morning for more reef adventures. underway under spinnaker hmm. and the weatherman said that we're going to be having northeasterlies for the rest of the day 10 to 15 knots 10 to 15 knots so i was a little bit concerned wasn't i just as the sun rose the wind died off and we've been listening to it whistle in the rigging last yeah. night so, so, <laughs> I, bit, no. I had a pessimistic outlook now we've got 10 to 15 today and then a couple of days of variables and then shifting back to the east in yep. a couple of days is what's predicted so i think we should go back to maggie shower do our thing and then we can go into townsville and see about doing a refit yep the re mini, mini refit awaits the refit that never happened in cairns but yeah. the abbreviated version <laughs> yeah well, i'm just enjoying being under sail and it's just so comfortable Let, we're not close hauled let's not think about refits then <laughs> let's let's think about delicious food and just chilling out yeah yeah are you all buttoned up? Nice little snack roll. Try to go at Yaki. 
Okay. Over the top of his head and just straight back. Woo. Good work, Pascal. Thanks. <laughs> Bring him aboard. Sailing in, we pass thick bands of Trichodesium algae on the surface. You know what that means? Push. Summer's coming. Summer's coming. Oh yeah, it was like that in uh, when we left um, Darwin. Yeah. In August, early. October, September. That's an early spring coming. Yeah. You know what that means? Oh, lots of cyclones this season. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, mate. I've seen the cockatoos. They are eating the red berries. You know what that means? Big cyclones this year, mate. Yeah, big cyclones. <laughs> Every year. Oh, it's going to be a big season for cyclones this year, mate. Seen them cockatoos, eh? How much do you think we can wring out of five knots of wind? <laughs> what are we doing? Three knots? We're doing three knots under that. No. You know, a lot of people spend their time thinking about, oh, what, what will I do during heavy weather and stuff like that? But um, the reality is dealing with light weather is the, is the biggest challenge of proper yachty faces. Unless you just want to start the engine and go for it, then you don't have to worry about it. Getting your boat moving in light airs is something you really need to think about. Well, it's back to motoring for us. The weatherman lied again. We haven't had 10 to 15 knots of breeze. We've got variables here. Uh, pretty much no wind at all. So we've got the engine on. But we've got a mackerel now. It's a good thing. More fish in the fridge. I think we better put the audio book back on. We're listening to Stormtroopers. Space Troopers? What's it called? Space Troopers? Space Shooters? Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. <laughs> A classic that I, I... Yeah, I'm getting wrong. A little while to discover that this comparatively gentle treatment simply meant that we were nobody. Hardly worth chewing out. Until we had proved in a drop our we The wind has returned. Now east northeasterly is now a norwest. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Yep. So the spinnaker's stowed. You did a great job. Thanks. Hassie, that was so smooth. Um, and now, yeah, we're sailing sort of on Marul's um, best angle, really, is, mm. uh, is a reach. Mm. She's a fairly close reach in the following sea. So I'd say, what are we doing? It's not very strong winds, but we're doing, yeah, four, four five. Knots. Yeah, between four and a half to five and a half knots. But it wouldn't be like more than eight knots of breeze or something, okay? Mm. Maybe 10. Well, the wind generator is starting to spin, but it's not making power. So with our apparent wind, we're about 10, 12 knots. Yeah. So yeah, we're not, it's not much wind, but we're all kicking along pretty well. So it's pretty good. We arrived at Hoshi Bay last night and we are about to scoot off and have some showers and also collect some casuarina wood because we are going to smoke the mackerel that I caught yesterday. Um, we have actually didn't have room in the fridge for half of the mackerel. So what I did is I cured it as soon as we caught it in salt and sugar and now I've just added some honey and cracked black pepper to it and hopefully we'll smoke it tonight with the wood that we collect. So I just mentioned earlier that I cured the fish and if you haven't seen any previous videos uh, that just means that I've coated the fish in salt and sugar in equal amounts. So I used about a cup, half a cup of salt and half a cup of sugar, and I just sprinkled it over the fish, both sides, skin side and the other side, and then I've just sandwiched the fish together like that. And then I did that yesterday, and then I drained off the liquid that came out of the fish, and then today I just poured honey over the top of the fish on the skin and the inside, and cracked pepper in between the two pieces of the fillet. So for any cruising oddies out there that they don't really need special salt or special sugar, do they? No, no special, salt, no special sugar. And you don't even really have to be that exact with the measurements. It's really just to experiment and see if you really like a salt, really salty product, you can add more salt. Mm. The thing is, you just got to add enough salt so that it doesn't, you don't get those bad flavours. You don't want the fish to go off. You need to cure it. Yeah. Especially because we're not putting it in the fridge because we don't have space at the moment. Which I'd only recommend doing if it's winter in the tropics. Or if you're yeah, if you're in a temperate region, as long as you've got somewhere cool to put the fish, it's fine. Also got a movie uploading.
Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do when we get into civilization. We the put videos up. So, so this so, yeah. mackerel, Pascal, we've taken to mackerel uh, when we butcher it. What's our favourite method nowadays? So we've been making steaks out of the tail end of the mackerel, especially when we're coming into a place like Horseshoe Bay because there's free barbecue facilities and these are really good on the hot plate of the barbecue by the beach. So they're, they're really delicious. There's lots more flavour, I think, because you've got the bone and the... Don't you reckon, Troy? Yeah, I'm, I love them. I'm definitely I love coming them around like to that way of thinking. And it's, yeah. it's really easy for me to process because yeah. just behind where the, um, the bum... <laughs> so you can see these are the, like the tail pieces here. Yeah, so just back from the bum, I just chop up all of those into steaks, and then forward of that, I just knock the knock the fillets off. And yeah. by curing them, we're going to have a, a rich supply of smoked mackerel. That's right, and it will last a long time in the fridge too, because we've still got plenty of reef fish from being out at Broadhurst for corals. We've still got coral trout in the fridge. So we wanted to do something that would last a long time in the fridge, and we could have in a week's time when we're out of fish. And it's totally value adding it, isn't it? Totally. Totally delicious. That's pretty much what we want. We'll grab a grab a few more. We tried. We tried we we, we got some casuarine like this, didn't we, Pascal? We left some of the, the sapwood on and not, not the heart. And it tasted a little bit like a garbage fire. <laughs> so, yeah, it was bad. But when you've got this stuff that's red and dead, casuarina is good smoking stuff. This, this is great. This is what the Roland called the whistling tree. Because when the wind goes through these pine needles of the casuarina, it makes a whistling sound. Would you like some casuarina facts, Pascal? Sure. Hopefully there's not much wind on the <laughs> mic. So when you look at these and they look like pine needles, what these are is actually the stem of the casuarina. The needles are tiny little white triangles at each one of these little nodes. And at each one of those little nodes, the casuarina can break off those stems at the leaves. What that means is that this tree can reduce its surface area exposed to wind and sun by that much at a time. Very incrementally, very modular design. So this, this tree can withstand all sorts of droughts. Uh, it's really, really hardy and that's one of its adaptations that it can just drop little by little the needles as you call them on the ground and stop transpiration and reduce that water loss. They're a really good pioneer tree all around the world. Casuarina's hardiness has made them an unwanted plant in many other parts of the world. And an unwanted plant in this part of the world is the cowthrop, or double G. These plants travelled here from South Africa in the hoofs of cattle. Okay, so we're just going to do one of these mackerel fillets at a time because it's going to go over there so it's not directly on the flames. At the moment, these, these sticks here are flaming pretty good. But as soon as we put that lid on, it'll damp that down and this will just turn into a massive big puff of smoke. So this mackerel will get a little bit scorched when it first goes in. Right. But you got it skin side down anyway. Skin side down. So at the moment, because I've got these damped right down, that fire in there It'll use up the available oxygen and smoke like crazy. So we can pull it, it'll that fire so it's starting to reignite again. Mm. But we'll smoke put it, it down. Shut off the oxygen. Shut it down. Oh, smoke's not coming. There it is. Now but it's now it is. Look at that. <laughs> Smokey. Smokey. Cool. Twenty minutes? A bit more? Um I reckon maybe even less, like it's, that's a pretty hot, that's pretty hot what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. Let's try it after about 15. 
Okay. I think 20 minutes might be a bit, a bit long. Well, we're not turning it this time. We are not turning it? No. no. Oh, it's going yellow already. Wow, it's, it's hot in there. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is a hot smoke product. We can close that, we can close that damper right down. Mm, just I, I had it open just to, to show you that there was smoke coming out. Mm -hmm. but, mm. Let's just get it smoky now. Yeah, so there's just a tiny little air hole there just so the fire doesn't completely die out on us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to be one smoke bit of pinch. So that looks like it's smoking pretty good. Mm. Carrying around heat beads is just, just another thing you, you'd be buying, you know, and heat beads don't just grow on trees, but sticks do. Holy smokes, I'm pretty excited about this. Yep. I opened up these holes a little bit before just to keep the flame going. So, whoa, look at that. So as soon as we took the lid off, this started to kick off again. Mm. But that is our smoked product. So we've got a little bit of before and after here. We've just pulled out the first lot that's been smoking like pretty heavily for 15 minutes. And it looks amazing. Look how beautiful. Golden brown it is. Yum. And that's the next one to go on. Yum. <laughs> really good. It's really cool because... It's really great because... Wait before you... You're gonna... Your noise of your eating's gonna be in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> How about the, the noise of me enjoying? Oh. It's good. And it's great because we didn't put it in the fridge, so... We caught this fish 24 hours ago, put it in the salt and sugar, and then smoked it today. Mm -hmm. We left the skin on this fish, and that helps hold it together when you're taking it off the, the rack, or off the smoker. See, it's pretty tough still. It's delicious in its own right. I scrubbed this with a scrubbing brush. My mouth's watering, so I can't really talk that well. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, so we scrubbed all the mucus off. So that skin is edible in its own right. It's pretty tasty stuff. And I didn't pull, I didn't even pull the bones out because now that this is cooked, all you do is just flake the flesh away on either side and just leave the bones in the center. It's just, it's just all too easy. It's such a shame that we've got crackers and cheese to go with this too. Such a shame. Oh, so good. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page, as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful.